Yo, what's going on guys? It is time for yet another reaction video. And today I'll be reacting to worst stereotypes by Americans when they travel. So I haven't done a ton of uh, traveling outside of the country. I've done a little bit. Um, and I can myself see how some of the things that Americans do when traveling in other countries can be perceived as rude or uh, impolite or just not a good uh, representation um, but at the same time I don't lump myself into that group because when I'm traveling in other countries I try to be as mindful and respectful as possible um, but I think it comes with any culture there's always going to be both sides of that spectrum there's going to be people who are uh, think that they own the world and can do whatever they want and then there's gonna be people who try to respect everybody and and I feel like I'm more the latter so let's go ahead and get into this video oh real quick shout out to uh, the infographic show let me go ahead and subscribe to them I thought I already was and give this video a like without them i couldn't make this video so if you guys uh, like this video go check out their channel subscribe to their channel so you can see more of this type of content from them um and shout out to the infographic show as well i am going to put you guys on all about the life which is one of my websites uh where i have a lot of the content that i personally consume or appreciate and uh just trying to help you reach a new audience so let's go ahead and Get into the video. American tourists are rude. German tourists like to hog seats. Chinese tourists only travel in packs. Visiting a foreign country or even a different region within your own country can be fraught with cringe-worthy moments. Tourists and locals often hold stereotypical beliefs about each other, which, while not the full truth, often hold an element of truth. While we can generalize about the behaviors of tourists from any country, today we're discussing some vagaries other countries and even other U.S. regions perceive in American tourists. Before you Americans watching get upset and bombard us with, not all Americans do X, Y, and Z, in the comments, please relax. This is not an official science. We're merely discussing some topics which have been frequently mentioned by locals of different nationalities when discussing American tourists. For you smug and smirking citizens from other countries, you also better chill. We might do a video on tourists from your country next. Sometimes before a tourist even opens their mouth and lets an American accent fly, locals have already pegged them as a visitor from the US. Why you ask? Because of how they're dressed. Americans are known for dressing down. They tend to focus on comfort and wear ill-fitting or baggy clothing. They love sweatpants, shorts, and have even been known to wear pajamas in public. Sometimes American tourists will dress inappropriately for... I've done a few of these now, and I don't, I don't get the whole sweatpants thing. Um, I'm not offended by it, I just don't get it. Uh, I don't feel like Americans in general wear sweatpants that much, unless they're seeing sweatpants as an athletic wear overall. But even still, I don't feel like, I think probably the most common thing is jeans of some sort, blue jeans. Uh, but yeah, and more casual, I can see that for sure. For visiting certain places of interest, such as wearing shorts to a religious site, thereby disrespecting locals. When not wearing sweatpants, Americans like to wear jeans. They also like Hawaiian shirts, clothing with the U.S. flag or patriotic image. Another misconception, Hawaiian shirts. I don't, I mean, maybe in the older community, but I don't feel like the younger community. And the patriotic stuff, I, I spoke on this on another one of the videos. I feel like that's kind of like half and half. I don't think uh, everybody's so over the top patriotic. And I think also just wearing a shirt that has a flag from your country doesn't mean you're like over the top patriotic. Um, but that's just my thoughts. Imagery and shapeless t-shirts with logos are slogans that mention sports teams or places local to their home state. Definitely on the t-shirts. Um, I, when I decided to sell my house and everything I have, I probably had over 200 t-shirts that I pulled from my closet to sell or give away. And even after pulling out all of those, I was still left with nearly another hundred shirts. Um, so yeah, and speaking of merch, 
go check out my merch. I'll put a, the links are in the video description. Uh, maybe I'll throw a link up top as well for you guys to go check that out. Help support my channel. Pick something up from my merch store. Americans enjoy accessorizing their comfortable clothing choices with fanny packs and ugly garish footwear, such as flashy sneakers, plastic clogs, and the ever-popular socks with sandals. Fanny pack, not so much. I think that's a very, very, very minimal uh, group of people. Um, loud sneakers, yes. I'm not a huge proponent of the loud sneakers. I do wear a lot of, of sneakers, but I think mine are a little bit more conservative. Socks with sandals, maybe a thing back in the 90s, not so much these days. Um, but yeah. The finishing touch is often a baseball cap or sun visor, which is frequently worn inside. Uh Lots of people wear baseball caps. I don't think that's very uncommon or overly common. I think it's just kind of right down the middle, but not in a work atmosphere. I think a lot of the times who are in a professional work atmosphere, you're not going to catch them in a baseball cap. Maybe some of the... Uh, retail market possibly or uh, more casual jobs you might see somebody wearing a baseball cap um, but out in public in general yeah you might see people wearing caps and to me whether you wear a cap indoor or outdoor is not a sign of being disrespectful in any way it's just if you've had a hat on all day and then you go inside and take your hat off your hair is probably all messed up so why would you take your hat off if your hair is all messed up wearing a hat into a church though wouldn't really probably do that. Unless an establishment specifically forbids it. Even when Americans are nicely dressed, sometimes they can even be picked out as being from the U.S. because they'll still wear sneakers or flip-flops. Has America's propensity for underdressing been scientifically proven? No, but online polls for worst-dressed countries and worst-dressed tourists frequently have the U.S. ranked near the top of the list. But what they're failing to mention is most comfortable. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. With anecdotal evidence from internet forums such as Reddit, it's fair to say that most American tourists could step up their fashion sense. American tourists often give a big clue as to what country they're from by smiling. That's right, the rest of the world thinks that Americans smile too much. Long articles on various websites and even an op-ed in the New York Times have discussed this issue. American tourists smile frequently, brightly, and often have an overly friendly demeanor. I think that's kind of strange, like, if I was going up to a crowd of people and people were smiling, I would probably be more inclined to talk to the people who are smiling because they seem more inviting, whereas the people who are maybe straight-faced or uh, frowning or just looking angry or what have you, why would that, why would somebody want to walk up and talk to somebody who already has that demeanor, you know, like, um... And what's wrong with being friendly? Uh, again, I'm not offended by these things. I just, the perception is strange to me um, that it's looked upon negatively to be friendly. If, if, does that make sense? Other countries tend to be more conservative with their smiles. Locals find such behavior creepy or off-putting. Americans' blinding smiles are part of their cultural landscape. In 2015, a team of international researchers found that countries with a large presence of immigrants tend to rely on body language to communicate friendliness, build trust, and cooperation. With a long history of immigration and 83 source countries represented by its citizenry, the U.S. has a larger immigrant population than any other country in the world. This is exactly what I was actually saying in one of my previous reaction videos is that uh, you're often communicating with people who don't speak the same language as one another. Um, and while you might be able to get a gist of what you're saying or, or have an idea through body language or gestures of pointing to things and nods and smiles, you know, it's just a polite way to acknowledge one another and communicate with one another uh, since you can't verbally communicate with each other. Smiling is a quick way to try to connect with others or be pleasant when you don't know what to say. What I just said. American dentistry and beauty standards, which emphasize straight white teeth, and the smiling can be perceived as being fake or passive aggressive. Some would accuse U.S. tourists of being superficial or hiding their true feelings behind a toothy grin. I could see that for some people, but I, I can't say that that's across the board. That's again, you're making, not the video, but that's again people making the assumption that everybody is the same. 
and not everybody is the same. A lot of people are smiling because they're just genuinely friendly, nice, kind people. It's not because they're trying to hide something or uh, mask what they truly feel. Does that happen? Yeah. Does that happen with the greater majority? I don't personally feel that it does. Some Americans take the overly friendly demeanor even further. They smile and try to connect with locals by adopting certain local mannerisms or slang to try to fit in. Locals also find this type of behavior odd and accuse Americans of trying. I wouldn't say you should try to fake your way into something, but if you are kind of kind of trying to adapt to the culture around you, I think it's just uh, trying to be respectful and you know maybe downplay the fact that you're a tourist so that you uh, don't come across as aggressive or the wrong way but it seems like it doesn't really matter what approach you take it's just being um, viewed as negative kind of I guess I don't know too hard or even cultural appropriation depending on the Americans action the difference may lie in the culture of American friendships versus the friendship culture of the country they're visiting. Americans tend to be outgoing and easy to generally get to know. They love knowing lots of people and have casual relationships with many friends. When meeting someone new, Americans make small talk by asking about a person's career as an easy way of gaining some insight into who that person is. I, I do that all the time. Um, what's your name? Where are you from? What line of work are you in? And I think once you have those three things and you can kind of build further upon it. And, and the reason I ask those things is it's you're trying to find out some way that you can connect with someone. Uh, and then if you can't connect with them on any of those three things then you can say, oh, well, you know, what does that line of work entail? What do you what is what do you do? Or, oh, what is uh, some tell me something about your country or, or the state that you're from or whatever. And, and it's a way that you can develop a conversation and learn from each other. It's not necessarily a, um, vanity, you know, it, it's just uh, it's just a way to meet other people networking, you know, like I, that's the way I view it. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll leave it at that. While on the other hand, locals in many countries consider a person's career less vital to their identity and view questions about what they do for a living as boring, rude, trying to categorize them or put them into a box. See, I, I, I feel completely the opposite on that, to be honest. I think um, what you do for a living says a lot about your character and your interest and who you are. Unless you're just solely working a job to pay the bills and you have zero interest in your career, your job. Um, then they, maybe that statement might make sense of what they're saying. But at least, I don't know if this goes uh, across the board in other countries, I have no idea. But generally people here are going to try to find something they love um, and follow that as a career path. Now, sometimes you might fall into a career path uh, and then your interest grows further into it, or you might be working at a dead end job that you absolutely hate. And in that instance, you know, Asking somebody what they do for a living may not make as much sense, but I just feel like uh, when I ask somebody what they do for a living, I can get to a, a little bit of a sense of who they are and then build on that further to get them know more, more that, to get to know them more specifically just on them and not just the career. The career is just the introduction of getting to know them. That's what I'm, I'm saying. In many countries, people are initially hard to get to know, but have longer term, deep, intimate relationships with a few friends as opposed to quickly built superficial relationships with a large number of people. Americans, impatient to force a rapport or bonds by appropriating local culture, can be seen as insulting or embarrassing. Of course, when Americans open their mouths, the American accent comes out. If it's a specifically recognizable accent such as a southern drawl, New Jersey spiel, or laid-back West Coast accent, locals may recognize it and have certain expectations or feelings about certain American tourists simply because of the accent. I kind of see that, you know, um, different regions of our country have different accents, so you might be able to easily identify where somebody is from in the U.S. Now, attaching a prejudiced view of them based on that accent, I, that's where I can disagree because um, Texas is one of the largest states and although 
people might have a southern draw um everybody here is not country you know we have uh four major cities uh in the u and texas and some of them being the largest in the whole whole country uh so we are very urban fast-paced living here in houston um that is completely different from small town texas so again to just make those assumptions based on an accent it doesn't make sense to me it just doesn't i mean if you want to say oh yeah they're from america fine i can give you that but to say oh they're from america they have a texas accent and then try to assume everything of what you you think about texas um, doesn't make sense to me this even frequently happens in america southerners are dumb hicks new yorkers are impatient and on and on yeah pretty much that's how it happens here too U.S. citizens have American entertainment being broadcast around the world to thank for that. American tourists are often seen as culturally ignorant, brash, and wanting to be catered to. These traits display themselves in many ways. Culturally ignorant, I could see for sure. Um, I didn't really get to know a lot about other countries until I started to pursue that interest on my own. And as I got older and as I started to travel, I think part of it is not necessarily that Americans don't want to know about other countries. I think there's just so much. Um, uh, America's huge, you know, so our country is the size of, of multiple countries combined. Um, so just the American history alone, you can only learn so, so much uh, history uh, and geography um, in your grade school years. So if it's something that you grow to have an interest in as you get older, then I definitely think you should pursue it more. Uh, again, it wasn't until I started to travel more and see other countries that I started to learn about those countries. Um, so yeah, I was fairly ignorant about a lot of things in other countries, not ignorant in the sense of in a disrespectful way, uh, ignorant in the sense of just um, don't know. I don't know about everything in that country because I wasn't taught that. So ways. Americans seem to prefer to stick to fast food such as McDonald's when they travel instead of trying out local cuisine. They often get confused or angry. When Not me. I want to take in the culture. I want to have as much food um, from wherever I am as possible. I want to try new things. Uh, I don't eat McDonald's in the U.S. so why would I want to eat McDonald's in another country? I think McDonald's is gross. The only thing I eat from McDonald's is their breakfast sandwich or french fries. That's it don't have the burgers, I don't eat onion rings, I don't eat their salads, chicken sandwiches. I don't have anything from McDonald's at all. So that's pretty bad uh, stereotype in my opinion. When they can't use American money in other countries, they seem to have the attitude that throwing their money around will get them what they want. Uh, whenever I travel, I don't even usually have cash. I do everything digital. I don't expect uh, to be in another country and use my American money. I mean, what sense would that make? I would. We, we don't accept money from other countries here, so why would we expect that they would accept our money there? Uh, that don't make any sense at all. Also, Americans rarely take the time to learn anything beyond the surface of local culture. They're ignorant regarding geography and global affairs. Many surveys have confirmed that Americans tend to know less about the world than people of other countries. Again, back to what I said, I think the U.S. being so big that there's already enough uh, for us to learn here. Would it be beneficial for us to learn about other countries? Absolutely. If they could find a way to integrate that into the school systems at a younger age, I think it would be incredibly beneficial. Um, but that would take an overhaul of the entire system. But I can also tell from, you know, these reaction videos that I've been doing so far is that the perception of America is very different from what it actually is. So to say that we're culturally ignorant about other countries, I could say the same about all these other countries are just as equally culturally ignorant about America. Most recently, a 2016 National Geographic survey quizzed over a thousand U.S. college students about geography, current events, and economics and world trade. Most respondents were only able to get half the questions right. They scored about 55 percent. 
On the flip side, locals report Americans as being offended when they are only familiar with large cities in the US and don't know the small town in the Midwest the tourist is from. Along with the cultural ignorance is the attitude that Americans are somehow better and other countries and people exist solely for the entertainment of Americans on vacation. I don't feel that way one bit. I, I think everybody's important. Um, again, like I said, I try to be as respectful as I can when I visit another country. Uh, I like to learn about the culture and where I'm at as much as I possibly can. Uh, whether that's the food, the people, the clothing, the art, I want to know as much as I can. Um, I don't want to go there and just boast that I'm an American and expect to get a pat on the back and some special recognition for being American. Uh, I, don't, I don't have that mindset whatsoever. U.S. tourists forget that they are guests in another country and should respect the customs and traditions of their host nation. Sometimes American tourists feel no compunction in taking a picture of people belonging to certain religions or cultures as some sort of vacation memento. I don't agree with that. I don't think you should do, be taking photos of anyone without their permission. Um, that being said, if you're taking a photo of uh, your family or your friends or who you're with and somebody happens to be in the background, indirectly in the background and just back there faded in. I don't think that should be an issue, but if you're taking pictures of people as if they are a tourist uh, attraction, then that's not appropriate at all. And also the ignorance of what some of the things are in a country. Um, I wouldn't expect people to come to the U.S and know every rule or law or what would be considered offensive here. So to expect everybody else, Americans or anybody visiting another country to know all your cultural traditions or expectations is just kind of absurd. You can't expect people who are not from your, your country, your background to know and understand everything about your country. Um, do I think that some people can be disrespectful about it? Yeah, I mean, maybe there's better ways of doing things. But uh, if I'm visiting another country and I do something that offends them because it's offensive to their culture, instead of just being offended by it, if you can communicate with one another, why don't you educate us on it instead of being offended by it? Because if we don't know that we're offending you or what we're doing is wrong, how can we correct it? Often without asking said person first, American tourists are notorious for being monolingual. Along with their pushy, needing to be catered to attitude, vacationing Americans often assume that people automatically speak English. They're surprised, frustrated, and can even be offended when locals don't speak English. Again, I don't have that expectation whatsoever. Puzzlingly, they've even been known to speak English louder and more slowly to try to get people to understand. Surveys have shown that about 20% of Americans speak more than one language as opposed to 56% of Europeans. In many other countries, students are required to learn another language before graduating high school. This is something I think America fails on. Uh, I think we aren't required to start learning a second language until high school. I took it upon myself in junior high to go ahead and get into Spanish at that time. Unfortunately, I'm still not fluent in Spanish, but I did attempt to learn a second language. I think if they started in grade school, maybe around first or second grade, teaching us a second language, uh, let's say something like Spanish or French, right? Um, and then continue that forward through uh, your senior year of high school. Maybe around fourth or fifth grade, you could start a third language, and then maybe around sixth or seventh grade, you start another language. And so that, that way, by the time you come out of high school, um, maybe you're at least fluent in one of those new languages, or maybe all of them, but at least you, you can dabble in four or five different languages, uh, where as, you know, the way the schooling system I grew up with, you know, we were only required to learn one. Um, so I do think we fail there. I think it could be adapted earlier. Uh, in, in school. In America, some school districts encourage learning other languages, however, nationally no such rule exists. 20% of Americans study another language in school as compared to 92% of European students. Of the bilingual Americans, many are immigrants or first-generation Americans. Professionals in the restaurant sector in other countries are often not impressed by the American tourists that patronize their establishment. When Americans do forego the fast food and try local dishes, they tend to be complainers. Not 
only do dining American tourists have the customer is always right attitude. They want their food to be served quickly and gallop through their meal. This behavior is odd to cultures where dining is important. Lingering over your food and enjoying the settling and conversation is a huge part of the meal. Also I think what's happened here in America is we live a very fast paced life and we've gotten accustomed to restaurants uh, having speedy expedient uh, service and um, everything trying to be the best quality uh, that it can be. Um, that being said, if you're in another country and things don't move at the pace that you want them to, you need to realize that you're in another country uh, and not expect everything to be the same way it is here in the US. So if it takes longer to get a meal out, then it takes longer to get a meal out. Deal with it. Suck it up. Don't complain. So local servers find that Americans have childlike palates. They'll ask for condiments such as ketchup so they can douse their food before eating it. American tourists are highly critical of food portion size in other countries, calling them tiny. It's true, serving sizes in typical American restaurants tend to be around 20% larger than the average entree served in Europe. This feeds into stereotypes of American tourists being fat and greedy. The fat part is true, some two-thirds of Americans are overweight. People in other countries assume that American tourists are wealthy. The US has a powerful global economic standing in regard to other countries. Many American TV shows feature stories about the upper class Americans. Americans have big houses and multiple cars. Furthermore, they're on vacation in another country. The US has a tipping culture too. And yeah, I think the perception of everybody here being wealthy is, is uh, very far off from reality. Um, what, if we might be more wealthy comparatively to other countries, but internally within our own country, uh, the wealth gap is pretty big and the middle class is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so, for instance, most people only get like about a week's worth of vacation in a year where in European countries, there you get, a, I don't know, what, like a month or, or way more uh, vacation. Um, we work long hours uh, and you earn your keep. There's no handouts. I mean, like, yeah, there's handouts for special programs, but I wouldn't say we have it easier here. Uh, everybody's working for the most part to take care of their family and take care of their needs. It doesn't mean we're rich. It just means we live differently. You know, the houses on average here are bigger. Um, but we've got more space to build on, and it's just kind of what we've become accustomed to. Uh, but yeah, that's just my opinion. So Americans expect to tip when they go overseas. Also, Americans sometimes get large sums of cash from foreign ATMs. To locals, this reinforces the idea that American tourists are rolling in the dough. Again, it comes back to what was just said. Uh, if we're not expecting... It, it, do you want people to try to use American money or do you want them to pull out money there so that they can use the currency of where they are? Which one's correct? It's kind of like it's, it it's, doesn't make sense. You're, the video, um, and I know, again, it's not the video. It's not you guys. You are just reporting on it. But it's kind of a hypocritical thing to say. It's like, oh, don't come here expecting to use American money. Oh, you pulled a lot of money out of our currency. What are you doing? Make up your mind. In addition to being depicted as wealthy in the entertainment media, young Americans are also displayed as carefree party animals. When young Americans go overseas to countries with lower drinking ages, they frequently go overboard on enjoying the liquor, living up to the image depicted on TV. Of I can see this happening. I mean, the, the, the drinking laws here are 21 and up. Um, and people don't know control when they've never drank, so they go to another country, drink for the first time, and they overdrink. I'm gonna pause right here because I think my camera is about to stop. Yeah, I think um, when you've got younger people going to other countries uh, where the drinking age is younger, and maybe some people haven't started drinking uh, yet, and then they go to another country and they're drinking for the first time, then the chances of them getting intoxicated are high because they are just not experienced in drinking. Um, do I think that they could be more respectful to the countries that they're visiting? Absolutely, 100% think they could be. Um, but the assumption that Americans are nothing but partiers, I can't really agree with that. 
Um, I, I, I spoke on this on one of my other videos. I think when you're in high school and college uh, age, you're going to have a little bit more of that party mentality um, because it's your youth. You're, you know, it's, you're enjoying life. But I think uh, after that and as adults uh, in general, you still do social gatherings. You still do entertaining things. You have parties to celebrate birthdays and holidays and things like that. But the idea that everybody just constantly is partying um, is not accurate. Of course, not all American tourists are slobby, fat, shallow, English-speaking, only culturally ignorant, drunken party animals who toss money around. Pretty much what I've been saying the whole video. <laughs> We can't ignore the grains of truth in these stereotypes. Thankfully, many people meeting American tourists visiting their countries realize that people are individuals rather than just a stereotype and treat them as such. What's an awkward experience you've had as a tourist or with a tourist? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, so pretty much, you know, um, what they, uh, the way that they close this video is kind of a, a very reminiscent of what I was saying throughout the video is that some of these things can be fairly accurate and then i think a lot of them are also blown out of proportion uh, and that can be said about any country not just americans um, there are probably plenty of stereotypes that americans have of other countries that other countries laugh at or balk at because they say well, we're not like that um, so i think everything goes both ways um, I think obviously with stereotypes, they originate from somewhere. So just as they said that there's grains of truth in these stereotypes, yes, there are. Um, I just hate when um, a small group of people can make a bad representation of a group of people as a whole. And all that's remembered is that small group of people and not the larger group of people. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, kind of like what they said, uh, same question I'm going to have for you guys in the comments. Um, tell me some stereotypes uh, of people from other countries or uh, of when you've traveled and experienced stereotypes. Um, and again, uh, shout out to the Infographic Show. Um, go check out their YouTube channel. They have tons of videos like this, uh, lots of great content there. So go check them out, subscribe. And speaking of subscribing, subscribe to my channel too if you're not already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later. Thank you.